so Milo wants to get up in this mix. <clears throat> I kind of sat down here just to show you guys a quick video. Um, another quick video of Milo just like dominating the scene. But uh, um, I'm just browsing around after I posted my own. But I noticed there's a lot of videos of like what they call a G3 slap or, you know, an HK slap or whatever. Um, it's almost comical like I kind of I you know find it funny but uh, um, the slap mechanism of the gun here G G3 slap HK slap um, it's a basic cocking function of a non gas operated rifle and uh, I, I had no idea that it was like such a huge talking point um, you know on YouTube but um, what I've done is I'm gonna show you guys uh, the slap function but I'm going to give you the logic behind the slap because I have my set may broken down and uh, the set may is the predecessor to the G3 so we're going to show you the set may slap but first we're going to kind of go in behind like why it slaps and, and why the cocking function um, I know a lot of guys have uh, you know in your .308 cal automatics like in, um, an SKS or an AK um, even clear into the FNs and you know stuff like that um, it, there's a whole different con concept here between the SETME and the G3 on the gas operation and, and the cocking mechanism of why they get this like slap charge and uh, pretty much we're going to look at the rifle and we're going to show you why so um, you'll hear a lot of guys say G3 slap HK slap your slap factor is this cocking lever and what they want to show you in the videos is that when this guy's spring loaded to some fierce pressure here you can see that it it resides in this upper tube and on an AK type rifle an SKS type rifle or any gas op type rifle this is normally a gas piston or a gas tube what this is on a set me or a G3 rifle is a dead space um, there is no gas op here where you see this front sight hood attached to the barrel um, there's no porthole or gas operation. If there's a dead block here where my thumb is, and there's actually a catch dimple for the return lever. And uh, the return lever free floats. And you can see here, Alley Cat wants to get in some of this because she's like, damn, I need some tension and whatnot. So this just free floats back and forth you guys you can flip this up this is your charging bar and uh, with nothing in the in it you know in the gun you can see this just wheels back and forth and then you have this this canted piece here and it's going to allow you to hold that in that position so naturally if this thing is under a fierce spring and you slap it this direction the handle snaps down and the spring carries it in the full forward position to latch just like that so there's nothing in here, and uh, that's because the set may is based simply on a stamp metal tube. Um, there's nothing to a set may or G3 at all, really. It is a stamp tube with a magwell and your charging piece. So what we're gonna do? Classic set may roller block. Where you're getting your slap, uh, your slap dangle from here is uh, your basic carrier spring, much like the G3. If anyone has a G3 by the hollow piece here on your bolt carrier and uh, these are your roller locks here you see a roller lock and a roller lock here and that's your main bolt carrier this is a delayed roller lock system and uh, you know if we flick this down you guys can see a roller lock pop out and come back in just like that so the rollers pop out and lock into the battery during the firing position and retract and blow back during the actual firing. It's called a delayed roller lock system. A lot of early machine guns are based on that. Um, that's your entire bolt carrier. The spring actually feeds into the tip of the bolt carrier. So basically what you're getting, this is the fundamental of the rifle without the trigger mechanism. Um, and I'm going to kind of just show you guys here, but fundamental of the rifle without the trigger mechanism is you have the stock piece with a huge carrier spring 
you're getting this roller lock assembly to blow back onto this every time boom, boom like this so the slap that they get is from this roller lock being all the way back in the cock position and when they slap it it's simply carrying forward we're going to show you that in the reassembly of the rifle take our spring out take our roller lock assembly like this you simply feed it into the tube we'll try to do it with like camera angle and whatnot but you can drop her down here let's see make sure we're not on like safety and whatnot there we go so you got to make sure that like our carrier piece is forward here then the whole roller lock assembly drops in you drop it in until you can see it in the bottom of the mag well there so you're all the way locked forward and those rollers are locked in the forward position and then what you do from there is you're going to go ahead and you're just going to take your entire trigger assembly which is like this entire get up it's all modular and uh, i'll probably set the camera down for this because it's all stamped and it's kind of finicky but what you do is you you lip this guy under here and you make sure that you're like on top over here and you like wheel it up into place so we're going to set the camera down i'm going to show you real quick tolerance on this guy is really really small and so you got to make sure you get this sheet metal lined up you're just pretty much trying to catch a sheet metal here and the sheet metal on the back piece here these two pins are the only thing to hold the gun together and uh, you're trying to catch you know the sheet metal on each side here and so it's pretty much just like um, you know matching your sheet metal up it's pretty pretty tiny intolerance but um, not hard I, you guys obviously I'm doing it one-handed so it's not like epic hard but um, so you basically you have your uh, your bolt carrier in here and uh, your trigger assembly on only thing that holds the gun together is the stock and the two pins so your stock obviously has your big spring carrier so you got your set may halfway here like this trigger assembly on nothing's holding this on just these two pins so basically what a guy does you take and you're gonna feed your stock piece in it's gonna go like that now that's a tight fit and it's gonna take me a little fitting and I'm gonna put this guy on for you really quick it's not too bad but it does require a little finessing you can give it a little bat bat a lot of these new guns will take a little bat 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 some of the newer guns will take a little smack and hit you know a little tender love when they're coming around because you know it hasn't been pulled apart that many times and it's a century uh, century receiver so anyways you got your two pins here and uh, your two pins basically are just going to go right here a lot of the old german g3 stocks actually have pin holders for them my pins are so very tight i know a lot of guys will say use a rubber mallet you know but basically we just give them a tap 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 my pins are so tight you guys that i can't use a rubber mallet It'll dent the rubber mallet, and I'm hoping this gets better over time, but I'm thinking that this might be some of those really tight sentry tolerances, so I'm just kind of gently tapping these until I, like, really break them in. A lot of guys say fire 300 rounds for the break-in, but... So pretty much, uh, we have a assembled set-me rifle, and you can see our charge bar here. Now the spring carrier from the butt stock is actually all the way in this guy. What you do is you're going to flick it back and see if we can one hand it and you cam it over just like so. So you see how it's cammed over into that locking position. Now I'm going to show you a straight down the gun, you know, slap what, what most folks won't. But, you know, your butt stock here, this main spring that resides in here is actually what's carrying the huge charging piece here. So your slap function on this, a lot of guys will slap it, is uh, it's simply determined by the slope of this metal here. 
It, it's simply held in a metal notch, and you can push it. You don't even have to slap it. You can push it forward just like this, and you can see how the catch from the back incline. Any of you guys are uh, old Nagant or Remington people, you'll know what the uh, this uh, incline canted does on any kind of a down lever. It's what locks a Nagant or Remington 1907 in action. And uh, what HK has done here is they've just taken you know this carrier piece and uh you know it, it is hard to pull back i'll tell you guys that it charges from the get-go and uh it's hard to pull back but uh you can slap it you can also thumb it slapping it slapping it guys is far more sexy when you're out at the range you can slap this shit like you're some kind of like bitch slapper but there's a lot of like hk slap videos but um now, just not to clown it or anything, because it's a bitchin' gun, you can even thumb it if you want. There's no, like, you know, the slapping involved. We'll do one slap just for good sake here. So, uh, you know, we'll charge this guy. We'll charge her and we'll slap her. Oh, hell yeah, dude. We'll put him up like that, and we're going to give it a good slap, because, you know, that's, that's what's, what's on all the videos is the slap. You know, it happens so fast you don't see it, and I don't understand what all the hoorah over the slap is, but uh, it's an HK slap, and it's just carrying that roller lock assembly right into the uh, locking mechanism here in the battery. So, a little bit about the Setman or HK slap, kind of giving you guys an idea of a roller lock, uh, you know, assembly, delayed roller lock. You're just waiting in there on delayed rollers uh, for that, uh, you know, the gas op from that bullet to come back. And it uh, will retract the rollers and send the bolt carrier back and come back for the next piece of business. So um, that's what you're looking at there. You guys got any questions on it or any hoorahs on the old uh, HK slap, just uh, hit me up. This is Chet signing out.